but even before discovering what the Quran clearly said, there were some incidents that helped me to become an atheist. My mother used to tell me that Allah knows everything. But when she asked me to pray namaz or salah, to do that I had to utter the verses in Arabic. I was reluctant to do that, for I did not understand the Arabic verses of the Quran. If I was going to pray, I wanted to pray in Bengali. It really angered my mother when I asked very innocently, Mother, if Allah knows everything, then why doesn't Allah know Bengali? <laughs> mother was embarrassed and angry with me. I asked some of my relatives and they got angry with me also. One day, as I kept reminding my mother about Allah's ignorance, she replied, if you say anything bad about Allah, your tongue will fall off. I was eight and had no idea that anyone's tongue could do that. So I went to the bathroom, locked the door, and said, Allah is the son of a bitch. <laughs> Then I became worried. <laughs> Maybe my tongue really would fall off. However, a minute passed, then two, then five minutes, and my tongue was still there. I understand right there and then that I could say anything about Allah and my tongue would stay in my mouth. I understood my mother was wrong. Islam does not consider women to be a separate human being. Man is the original creation and womankind is created secondarily for the, for the pleasure of men. Islam considers the woman as a slave or sexual object, nothing else. Women's role is to stay at home and to obey her husband. Women are considered weak, so they should be taken care of, their body and mind, their desire and wishes. Their rights and freedom must be controlled by men. Islam treats women intellectually, morally, and physically inferior. In marriage, Islam protects the rights of men and men only. Once the marriage is consummated, women have no rights whatsoever in this field. The Quran gives total freedom to men, saying, Your men, your women are at your feet. Go unto them as you will. Women are told to run to their husbands wherever they are, whatever they do. It is their duty. The Hadith says that two prayers that never reach the heavens are number one, those of the escaping slaves, and number two, those of the reluctant women who frustrate their husbands at night. Islam considers women psychologically inferior. Women's testimony is not allowed in cases of marriage, divorce, and hudud. Hudud that the punishment set by Islamic law for adultery, fornication, adultery against a married person, apostasy, theft, robbery, and so forth. If any woman is raped, she has to produce four male witnesses to the court. If she can't, there is no charge against the rapist. In Islamic law, the testimony of two women is worth that of one man. In the case in which a man suspects his wife of adultery, or denies the legitimacy of the offspring, his testimony is worth that of four witnesses. A woman does not have the right to charge her husband in a similar manner. Women are not allowed to inherit the property on equal terms with their brothers. In the case of inheritance, Allah says, a male shall inherit twice as much as a female. And after all the rights and freedom, after obtaining all the sexual pleasure and having the pleasure of being the master, men will be rewarded by Allah with wine, food, and 72 virgins in paradise, including their wives they had on earth. And what is the reward for the pious woman? Nothing. Nothing but the same old husband, the same man who caused her suffering while, they, while the two were back on the earth. It was easy for me to become an atheist. I was a student of science, so it was hard to accept that the sun moves around the earth and the moon has its own light. 
and the purpose of mountain is to support the earth so that it will not fall down somewhere. I came to suspect and be sure that the Quran was not written by someone who was at all in the knowledge of the universe. Not only did I read the Quran, I read the Hadith, the words of Muhammad. I found different events of Prophet Muhammad's life in which, when he had problems, Allah was able to solve them right away. For example, when he was, when he was sexually aroused after seeing his daughter-in-law, Allah sent him a message saying that he could marry her because his son was adopted and thus not his real son, so that marriage was therefore justified. For that, he created a new rule that Muslims would not be allowed to adopt any children. Muhammad married 13 times, one of his brides being six years old, Aisha. Allah, he said, told him that he was allowed to enjoy his wives, his female slaves, and all the captive women he possessed. He put his beautiful young wife Aisha in a way because he did not want his friends looking admiringly at her. Allah, he said, told his friends that they should not go to the Prophet's house any time that they wanted to go, but if they did go, they should not look at any of his wives or ask any of them for anything or any favors. Muhammad was so jealous that he consequently introduced the veil for his wives and ultimately for all Muslim women. Even the widow marriage was legal at that time. He made it illegal for men to marry any of his own wives when he himself died. It became clear to me that Muhammad had written the Quran for his own interest, for his own comfort, for his own fun. I stopped believing in Islam. When I studied other religions, I found they too oppressed women. In our society, I have witnessed that women are flogged. They have been stoned to death. They have been raped and then accused of committing the rape. And the rapists have been set free. Women have been suffering from trafficking, from slavery, from all sorts of discrimination. Men have thrown acid on women's face and then walked away as happy men. Women are not considered as human beings. For a typical couple, the most unwanted thing is a female baby. If a female baby is born, either the wife is forced to divorce for her crime of having given birth to a female, or else the wife must spend her life in place. As I grow up, I realize that